Welcome, everyone. We are so excited to have you here talking about Candida. Woo! Yes. I got and the picture the, for the Candida Monday Night Madness with the tongue. Um, pro- Probably Kayla. That was intense. I know. It was great, though. It because, was great. Like, because one thing that we love about holistic health is that the wins in this field are not like your weight loss before and after pictures. <laughs> like the wins we get from our students are like, check out my tongue. Like, oh, that's amazing. And they're like, the candida's like gone, you know, or they're like getting out in the sun in the morning and they're like, look, I'm like regulating my circadian rhythm. And there's so many ways to win in holistic health that have nothing to do with with how many pounds you lose and what the scale says. And mm-hmm. that's why I was really happy. You know, the advertisement for tonight's call was uh, showing a tongue that has candida overgrowth because the tongue is one place you can look to see, you know, where your body's at with its levels of, of fungus and candida. So yeah, one one quick thing I love about that holistic health field because our before and after pictures in this field, you never know what you're going to get, actually. <laughs> is this true? I've had people, I won't even say what people bring in. I, I'm there, sometimes they'll bring in like whole containers of parasites. Look, I got them all out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, my job is amazing. You know, so, uh, but those are big wins because now there's not something else eating up all the nutrients and they're finally able to absorb nutrients because the parasites are dead. These are big takeaways. So we're super excited when you share those with us. Uh, anyhow. So tonight, we're going to try to keep this down to a half an hour, I know, to hold your horses on this one, but we're going to talk about candida. We want to talk about candida and the great thing about candida, because it is very, very important that we have candida, but then what happens if we have too much of it and where did it, how did we get too much of it in the first place? What has happened to our, to our bodies where we have all this overgrowth of candida? And then the most exciting part, of course, is how do we eliminate candida? I wish you were all here because you could just come to my house on Thursday and I can cook for all of you because we're doing a whole sugar-free, grain-free, dairy-free cooking class. And it tastes amazing. So if you're coming into town, let me know so you can come over and eat my food. But we're going to talk about what to do. And you can join us on Thursday night if you're part of our Human Body Master Guide. So there yeah. we go. Okay, yep. so you, you can do that. So you can join virtually. You can. Amazing. So when it comes to organisms that live on and in your body that are not your human cell, there's a few main categories. You have bacteria, you have viruses, you have parasites or worms, and then you have fungus. And uh, we used to categorize mold in its own category as well, but that actually works a lot like a fungus. Um, But these are so different categories of microorganisms that make up your body's microbiome. And uh, sometimes microbes that we vilify as bad you actually need some of it just in a small dose. For example, H. pylori in small, the right dose can actually help keep other harmful bacteria in the stomach in check. You just don't want an overgrowth of H. pylori or else you're going to, you can develop stomach ulcers. And candida is one of those things where it plays a role in your body's microbiome. But if we, you know, take rounds of antibiotics that kill off the good bacteria, or we just eat like a high carbohydrate diet, that's very normal in America or bad fat, high stress. There's so many different things that can contribute to a candida overgrowth. All of a sudden you get too much of, of one microbe that you're, yeah, you're only actually supposed to have, you know, you're supposed to have less of it basically. So we're going to talk about candida overgrowth because it's it's extremely uh, widespread right now. And uh, the symptoms are showing up in people's lives in ways that they're not even attributing to candida, but they should be. And children, there are so many children with candida. It is incredible how many children are full of candida. And we wonder why. Well, we have sugar in every vaccine. So these kids are being born and boom, right? So we want to we want to talk about what feeds candida well, also, and also what the, some of the symptoms Also the breakfast. Are. I mean, I'm not going to just oh, point the vaccines. I'm just saying they get addicted to sugar. No, no, no. I'm saying they get addicted age. to sugar from the time they come out of the womb. And so it's just part of, even if we look at our formulas, we're full of sugar. That's where I was going from that. They have been exposed to so much sugar that it becomes something that they crave. And that's what we want to explain is when you are craving food, it is not you, right? Because a human body needs food, but when you, sugar. when you need that sugar, that little bit of ice cream or that little extra p- piece of potato or a piece of bread or a pancake or whatever it might be, that's always that little, oh, I just need some more sugar. And that's not you. That's the candida screaming, hey, we need some more sugar. So can we just talk about some of the signs of candida overgrowth people might not be aware of? Yeah. So the top one that uh, we see, she already mentioned, I mean, there's topical things we can look for when it comes to, um, you know, the tongue and the skin itself, as well as um, like in women vaginal discharge. 
but in terms of drip and toenail yeah. fungus um but in terms of like day-to-day symptoms showing up what she mentioned is that like urge to snack all day long um that's a really common symptom of candida overgrowth because um those candida the same way an overgrowth of uh, bacteria that live off of sugar can hijack the body's hormonal messaging system and send signals to the brain saying, I'm hungry, I need more food. Those aren't always your human cells sending those messages. It can be the candida and it can be the bacteria sending those those messages. So that's, the, that's one thing is the, all the snackiness. And then another thing would be the um, the same symptoms of leaky gut are actually very congruent with candida where you get like tired after meals. Uh, There, you might experience fatigue throughout the day. That's like one of the most common ones is just not having lots of energy. Brain brain fog is huge. A lot of, a lot of gas or a lot of, because it's, you're, you can really, when you, people who have acid reflux often will experience um, a many signs of candida overgrowth because this, this, your intestine, small intestine, you have two sphincters, you have the pyloric sphincter and you have the lower esophageal sphincter. So the food comes into the stomach and it stays there. But if the sphincters are both open because candida is creating a gas, candida releases gas, right? And so we have all this gas building up in the small intestine, giving bloating and giving all sorts of issues. And that can actually cause the sphincters to open up. And we also have acid reflux from that. I'm just going to go ahead and drop a bunch in the chat right now while Amy's talking um, of different symptoms, because you're going to look at this list of symptoms and be like, oh my gosh, that's part of it too. And that's part of it. And that's part of it. So even things like blurred vision and dizziness and gum disease. And my biggest thing is runny eyes. You can look at people and they've got runny eyes all the time. And that's a huge indicator that they are loaded with candida. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to finish this little list here. So open up your chat section, everyone. I'm putting a bunch of information here. Um, Rashes is another thing. Remember that your body wants to eliminate. And if you're not having great bowel movements, you're going to actually get some candida overgrowth trying to come out through the skin. We've been able to help watch that disappear drastically just by opening up the, um, by opening up the uh, avenues of, of elimination. Okay, there we go. That's the rest of them, guys. So now you have all the symptoms in your chat section. Those of you who are joining us later, the chat section uh, will be, this will be um, right below. You can click below in the verbiage area on this blog post and you'll be able to see this. Yeah. So I'll just quick mention one thing and it's that candida overgrowth is like one of many conditions that like the medical field did not acknowledge for the longest time, like the same way they said leaky gut was impossible because your small intestines don't leak. They're like, there's no such thing as leaky gut guys. Your small intestines don't leak. Like that's the whole point of them being confined. And we're like, "Mm, pretty sure this stuff's entering the bloodstream that shouldn't be in there. And they're like, well, it's not from your small intestines. And now, now, you know, now it's called like a, um, what's it called? (laughs) What's the medical term for it? Yeah. It's leaky gut. Oh my gosh. Oh, um, intestinal permeability. Yeah, permeability. They're like, um, intestinal permeability is now affecting um, a large okay. percentage of the population. And uh, now there is well, no leaky gut. lipopolysaccharides <laughs> leaking into the bloodstream. So so I'm happy it's starting to get recognized because that's going to help a lot more people um, address their fatigue and address their gut health issues. But mm-hmm. candida overgrowth is another one of those things that, uh, you know, they said like, oh, only in severe cases do people get candida overgrowth. We've been saying for a long time, like, no, nah, this stuff's been around for a while and it's really uh, just gotten worse, mostly because of the fact that our human bodies evolved um, often, you know, having regular periods of fasting mm-hmm. and not so many refined carbohydrates. So we have like tons of access to food and tons of access to carbohydrates and tons of access to antimicrobial agents and glyphosate and things that are throwing off the gut microbiome and the immune system. So you combine all that together, not to mention the stress of uh, just like stress factors from 21st century living that are uh, you know, high like cortisol directly impacts your immune system functionality. Um, it down regulates your immune system on purpose because if your body's really stressed out, you're not trying to fight an infection. You're trying to like escape the impending doom. So you have all these factors going on. So yeah, it's just natural. We would be dealing with a lot more candida overgrowth today than, than we ever have been. And so candida gets fed. The, the, now the great part about candida is you need it because it is a self-regulator of sugar. So when you have way too much sugar, then 
then candida is going to kind of come out like Pac-Man and eat up some of that sugar because the more sugar you have, well, the more insulin you're going to need. And so we often find our diabetics type one, type two, even pre-diabetic, they have too much sugar in their bloodstream. Hello. That's what diabetes is, right? Hypoglycemia. Hyper. And so hyper. And so what we have, my mouth goes faster than my brain sometimes, but anyhow, and you all know that by now, but anyhow. And so what we're dealing with is there's so much sugar in the bloodstream that candida will come out and kind of eat up some of that um, sugar in the gut so that we don't have the need of insulin being pushed out by the pancreas. So for small, you know, eating a bunch of grapes or eating something, a piece of cake or eating four pieces of cake, right? You've all missed it. If you've not seen Amy eat chocolate cake, she loves chocolate cake, a good chocolate cake. But anyhow, and so when we eat those things or we eat cookies, then we want to have that self-regulating can that candida come out because it helps to eliminate the need for extra insulin. It's when we are eating so much sugar and so much grain that now we have this candida overgrowth and candida has a very, very, very hard outer shell. You need specific enzymes to help build. Remember enzymes break things down and build things up. And so an enzyme needs to go through the outer shell of the candida to actually open it up so we can actually kill it. So the, the number one thing to do for candida, everyone is to starve it. It's living on sugar. That's what feeds it. It's the same food that feeds cancer. Matter of fact, you can find you can find many journals written and and uh, um, um, documents written by even some medical doctors saying that candida is always a precursor for cancer. And so be aware of that. Um, but any so I do tell people candida overgrowth is a precursor for cancer because it is the exact same environment that feeds cancer. So when you go onto a candida safe diet, you're actually killing off cancer cancer cells as well. And so in candida to stop feeding, it means no more grain, no more dairy, no more sugar. Those are the three main, the main sources of sugar for for candida because our grains turn into sugar because there's so much starch in the grain. Remove the bran, remove the germ, and now we have a piece of starch and we have that starch replicated, you know, how many times in a, in a piece of whole wheat bread or a piece of white bread, and we have a lot of starch that breaks down into sugars. And so the, the lower amount of breads and pastas that we can eat that are main, made out of whole grains or even just white bleached Refined grain, grains, I don't, yeah. at this moment, I don't care if it's whole wheat that you raised in your backyard and sang to it and sprouted it and then made it in a sourdough. I don't care. All grain is going to help feed that candida. And so eliminating all your sugar, eliminating all your grain, and then your dairy will at least eliminate. So the most, whatever you can do, if that's going to be too hard to cut out at, you know, cold Turkey, uh, then you want to take steps to do that. But by eliminating those food sources, candida will automatically start to die off but it won't be happy. Candida is not a happy thing. If you have a lot of candida and you stop eating sugar, you're going to be craving it because yeah. it's alive and it's hungry yeah. and it is living in you. And so it's, uh, it's going to have, it's going to give you some attitude once in a while. Yeah, totally. So attitude for the cravings. And then also this is important for anyone who, uh, does any type of microbiome balancing reaction after if there's been a severe overgrowth of something mm -hmm. like that concept of the Herxheimer reaction is very common. Like we've had people start off on the Candex enzyme. So Candex is a, it's made by Pure Life. Mm -hmm. Pure Essence. Pure Essence. Pure Essence Life. Um, it's just a great enzyme blend for Candida. But honestly, there I've started seeing a lot more really good enzyme blends for Candida coming to the market. So um Candex still works great. Yeah, Candex is still great. Oh, yeah. But I'm just saying there are there are other ones There's that other are now enzymes. designed. But those enzymes that are rich specifically in protease enzymes. So remember, protease is break down proteins, and that's what part of this hard outer shell of the candida is made of. So you take these enzymes on an empty stomach. We've had people who have started off with like one capsule a day, and they they will get like bedridden from the <laughs> From the not often, so don't worry, you'll from, be fine. But I'm just saying, from the <laughs> die off of like mm -hmm. the candida breaking apart, and why why does that make someone bedridden? I want to explain this. Mm -hmm. As the these unfavorable microbes like die and create debris in your body, mm -hmm. your immune system's job is to clean that up. And remember, one of the first things your immune system does when it has a when it has a job to do 
that's like bigger than it thinks it has energy for is to induce fatigue in you so that you go and rest yes. so that it can spend your body can spend its energy mounting this immune system response to clean up whatever's going on inside your body whether that's a surgery whether that's a an infection, um, an infection mm -hmm. whether you know that's yeah viral infection bacterial mm -hmm. infection mm -hmm. um you know any type of just physical injury anything where your immune system's rebuilding and repairing it your body wants you to go to bed. it wants you to rest <laughs> and, and that's another reason why like don't like when people are really tired um because they're sick and they're like oh they haven't eaten anything we're like oh, the food's actually not that don't important <laughs> get you can give them electrolytes they do need minerals but um we all have around a hundred thousand calories stored on our bodies at baseline so like don't worry about not mm. eating much yeah. if your body is not hungry it probably is into inducing a loss of appetite so your body can instead spend that energy on um, amounting this immune response. Now there's always exceptions to that. There might be a time where like, it's really important. You like force feed yourself. So you have enough food in certain instances, but generally speaking, just like kind of trust that when your body is inducing a loss of appetite or inducing fatigue, it needs to rest and exert that energy on cleaning up whatever's going on. Now here's the issue. If someone's getting an immune response after every time they eat a meal, because they have leaky gut, then they're going to be tired after every meal. So that's where we're like, okay, we need to do something to get to the root cause of this fatigue because they're, we, we shouldn't be tired after meals. So if, if you notice you get tired after every meal, that's a sign of leaky gut and intestinal permeability because you have those like microbe debris that's leaking out into your bloodstream after each meal and triggering an immune response, which is then going to trigger fatigue. So you can go lay down and rest and your body can clean that up. Okay. So what I'm, I'm, I'm coming full you, circle. Okay. Full, Cause you're scaring people right now. Okay. Keep okay. going. Well, the full circle of this is how do you help combat a Herxheimer reaction? I would supplement with IgGs or colostrum, which is IgGs and plus some other nutrients. So IgGs, those are immunoglobulins made by your immune system, except if you're supplementing with it, they usually take these Ig, they're antibodies taken from um, bovine typically. And, um, these what these antibodies will do is if you take those um and i've had clients who needed to take six capsule capsules of igg for every one capsule of the detox you know agent because like that they needed that help with their immune system because those antibodies come in and antibodies are like a lock and key looking for pathogenic organisms to lock onto and send a signal for your immune cells to come gobble it up. And so if you supplement with that, you're just equipping your immune system with more agents that can help bind and neutralize this debris and this die off that can make that Herxheimer's reaction so much more tolerable on your body. So that's just one takeaway for as a practitioner or for yourself, if you if you've tried doing candida detoxification in the past, like taking a simple enzyme or um, any type of detox regimen to, to get a microbiome issue in check and you get severe symptoms, you probably need to decrease the agent you're taking to, uh, you know, balance things out and up the levels of IgGs you're taking or the antibodies. Now, um, Maria... You asked for an IgG. We uh, Microbiome Labs makes a really good one, IgG 2000. Um, and then there's also some um, high quality colostrum brands I can recommend at the end of this call. So a couple of things though, and I mean, I've had I count thousands of clients that have had candida. Yeah. And so a, a very severe reaction has only happened a few times. So mm -hmm. it's something, but to be aware of it, because like one of my clients I'm working with now has a skin issue. And so, and yes, she definitely has, she has five strains of candida right now when I did my testing on her and I was like, oh my gosh. Right. So, so she's on a candida protocol and it hit her right away, but we have her in the sauna. We have her making sure she's doing as many bowel movements in a day as we can, you know, two or three bowel movements a day to help get all of these toxins out of the body. So you can add the IG IgGs, you can do your backup like you mentioned, but this won't be typical. It won't be yeah. long lasting. And I, I saw one of the notes that came through, is this diet for life? No. The best thing about doing a candida cleanse is number one, you're going to feel fantastic when you're done. You're and just going to have a lot of so weight. much more You'll energy. You'll lose a lot You'll of lose weight. weight. Yeah. Because a lot of times people can't lose weight because they have this addiction to sugar yes. because they're full of candida. Yes. So they can go on a diet, but they're like, I just can't. I just can't. I cannot give up sugar. I can't give up noodles. Yeah. I can't give up grain or bread. And I'm like, 
No, you can't, but candida can. So when you kill the candida, now all of a sudden you can be losing weight. So just put that back in your mind for yourself and your friends and loved ones who are having a hard time losing weight. It literally can be because they are addicted to sugar because they are loaded with candida. So there are, um, I, please open your chat section. I just put a whole bunch of foods and, process and things you want to avoid because sugar hides everywhere. It's in all your dressings. It's everywhere. So be very careful because you might not be aware of just how many foods have uh, candida in, uh, have sugar in them. One of the couple of the questions that were, that came was, well, I need to eat like this for life. And that's what I'm getting to is no, the cool part about this is when you get your candida under control, you're going to feel when you have candida, you're going to feel it in the body and you're going to be able to take some, I have Candex in my home. Uh, and so I have it so that if I I always say I eat too many red grapes because I love organic red grapes, but then I need to take some Candex. I can't eat way too much of that at one time. Mm. So I'll take yeah, a couple I do Candex a at night or in the morning and then I'm fine. Like literally in a day or two, you just get rid of yeah. all your extra Candida. I do. I definitely uh, grab my Candida, pull my Candida Candex. bottle, Candex bottle out after Christmas, after the holidays and New Year's. And I'm like, mm. I'm going to need a couple well, days I'm of German and I have to make some really good, delicious things. So if you don't have a place for Christmas, come on over. But anyhow, and so you will actually feel it. And let me tell you, you guys, this is fun. Write this down. This is a test you can do tomorrow. And it has over 90 some percent success rate at telling you if you have Candida or not. And it's free. So you can do this tomorrow. Studio audience, do this tomorrow. It's super fun. So you take, and we did this for our kids. Like, can you imagine growing up like this? Like every Wednesday, I'm like, okay, you get to pee on a pH strip and do a candida test, you know? So it was like, just a, it was a fun thing to bring into the family. So if you have anybody else living with you, have them do this test. If you are intimate with a spouse or a lover, right? You need them to do the same thing because candida is going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth sexually. And so you do want to have them do this as well, but take a glass cup so you can see through it and fill it with water. And then in the morning, just get a big old Louie honey and spit in that thing. And you can spit a couple of times, but you want to spit. And you'll watch the spit at the top of the water. It doesn't matter if it's distilled water, RO, I've, I've tested it on every form of water. It'll sit there on top. If it just floats on top, you don't have any candida. You watch. Some of you are going to be like, oh, Right. Cause it's going to start sinking, right? It's going to start coming down in strings and fill the whole cup. So if it starts to come down, scary, look at it once, throw it away. Cause it'll make you more nervous and get on a candida protocol. But this is a great way to see how are you doing getting rid of candida? So you can start a candida diet. You can start a candida protocol and then spit in that cup every Wednesday or whatever day you choose and just kind of get an idea of, am I getting rid of my candida? And you'll see it lessen and lessen until it just floats. It just floats on the top of the water. So these are, that's an easy test that you can do. And again, very highly, highly accurate. Um, and some people you're going to do, um, a candida protocol and then it, you might need to do a candida protocol for several months. Some people, it does take quite a while to kill the candida out of the diet, especially if they're dealing with, you know, diabetes and cancers and, you know, many other things. Um, but and I, and one of the questions that came before class, Amy, I think if we could just jump in there is killing parasites. The cool part is a lot of the things that you take for getting rid of candida are also kill parasites. And all of you have parasites. There's probably not ever been anybody I've ever tested that didn't have parasites. Everyone has parasites. It's how many do you have? And luckily black walnut, which is fantastic for parasites, is also fantastic for can for candida. Yeah. So there's all these antiviral and different yeah. agents you can take that will actually help with it. And what I want to say about that is, uh, once again, we can never, ever, ever, ever underestimate the importance of environment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we've uh, even like whether it's parasites or whether it's candida, you know, oftentimes when people hear there's a gut microbiome or any kind of microbiome imbalance in their body, their first instinct is to want to kill off the bad guys. That's like the first instinct. It's like, I have parasites. I want to kill them. I have candida overgrowth. I want to kill the candida. I have a bad gut bacteria. I want to kill off the bad gut bacteria. And I keep coming back to just the analogy of a pond. And, uh, you know, you have a, a body of water and depending on what is feeding that body of water, you can literally change the bacteria in a pond. You know, you guys have witnessed a pond turn into algae just overnight 
with a, you know, runoff from a nearby farmer pouring nitrates into the, into the pond and the algae eat it up. And all of a sudden it's green the next day. And you're like, well, where did all this algae come from? Like it was almost, you know, it was not like this yesterday, but then they treat it with a chemical and that changes the pH of things. And all of a sudden it's back to clearer. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the environment we create in our gut is it's it, it literally changes by the day. It changes by the meal. I can like I can have a single meal and be like, oh yep, that definitely fed my can. You know, I could that fed my candida. I can tell. And so not in like a hypo. Like I'm not trying to stress out about it way because you know the good part about learning about your body is you know how malleable it is. You actually feel like superwoman and superman because you're like, okay, I know how to balance this. <laughs> but your I, I don't want anyone thinking like, oh, parasites, I want to kill the parasites. I want yeah. them thinking, I want to create an environment in my gut that is so good. Those parasites are going to leave. Those parasites are going to pack up their bags and exit mm-hmm. town. Mm-hmm. And you can do that. We've mm-hmm. put people on gut healing protocols that had nothing to do with parasite cleansing. Mm-hmm. And they literally had parasites leave their body because they created such a healthy gut environment just by doing the good stuff that the parasites just, it wasn't a favorable environment for them anymore. And they left. So I really want you to have that mentality when it comes to bacteria and 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 candida and parasites and all of that is like just create let's let's focus on creating that gut environment that's so favorable for the good guys um, that that it that actually naturally helps the bad guys exit. Well, and I want to talk about the good guys for a minute because that's often why you have candida is because you have a lack of good guys yeah. because we've killed them off. A one round of antibiotics can wipe out the good bacteria that was keeping your candida yes. under control. Yes. So then all of a sudden you get a yeast infection. Yes. They're not telling you, oh, that's candida overgrowth and you need to do something about that. So yes, taking probiotics, eating sauerkrauts, eating those fermented foods that are so phenomenal for the body. If you eat kimchi, you might not want to date that night. But besides that, it is fantastic. Have you ever dated someone who just ate kimchi? I love wow. kimchi by the bucket. Well, um, and my dating life is great. Kind of. Anyhow, it's kind of. Anyhow, so we won't talk about that right now. Uh, that'll be another uh, another meeting. But anyhow, so what we want to do is, yes, take a good, healthy probiotic. Now, I do have to mention this right now because we are seeing an explosion in SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, and we're seeing an explosion in small intestinal methanogen overgrowth. So you might take probiotics and you feel worse and you get more yeah. bloated because you actually are dealing with the bacterial overgrowth. We need to do that. Maybe we could do that next couple of weeks. We do we'll do one on SIBO because- because it's, because it's my passion to SIBO uh, to help people understand it. But so if you do start getting bloated or feeling uncomfortable, don't stop taking probiotics, change them. The one probiotic that can cause a lot of issues is lactobacterias. Even though you so, need a lot of lactobacterias. You, yeah, you need a lot of it, but, but you need to, we need to kill off the small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And no, you don't do that with antibiotics. So we'll come to class in a, a few weeks when we do this. But anyhow, just be aware that yes, probiotics are going to be very, very helpful. And another thing, again, back to the diet, you, you'll you know how long you need to do this because you'll be spitting in a cup. And if you spit in the cup and it floats, great, you're doing wonderful. But I can guarantee you, you are going to feel so much better on this diet plan that you are not going to go back to how you were eating before. You just won't want to. You are going to have more energy because you're not eating all that grain. You're not eating yeah. all the sugar and you're not eating all the dairy. And those things take a long time to break down in the body. You're going to be on a more meat, vegetable, you know, fruit diet, nuts and seeds. And and that is very quickly absorbed, uh, most of that, not the meat, but yeah. absorbed by the well, body and proud, giving you that proud energy. Of you. I was proud of you for that. You're proud of me, honey. Okay, thanks a lot. Anyhow, <laughs> so. Um, one thing I will say, though, is like after the candida is in check, like I, I definitely have noticed this in myself. I am way more tolerable to like batch, uh, like healthy doses of carbs when I, you know, when I eat them, like the sweet potato or the rice with the Indian yeah, food or like whatever no it is. Deal. Um, Cause you don't have that overgrowth issue. And so your body just properly metabolizes it and your blood sugar comes back down to normal and you don't get this like candida overgrowth effect. <laughs> I so, am still answering Karen's question. Okay. So you're answering Karen's and then we have like 17 questions to answer. No, so I know we're getting there. <clears throat> if you have a spouse who's like, you're crazy. You're weird. There's no such thing as candida. I'm not going to do the diet. Be like, fine. I'm not going to sleep with you until you do a little bit of candida cleansing because you're going to spend so much time and energy getting rid of candida. And so and so is like, oh yeah, I'm not going to do that. Be like, mm-hmm, cut off because I am not going to get it back. When you feel good and you do not have candida anymore, it will matter to that spouse. So don't be shy about this because they don't believe in it doesn't mean it's not real. Mm-hmm. And so you learn, you live your life, you feel better, you have more energy. And then spouse over there is going to catch on that 
you know, it's not going to be the same love life until you are assured you're not going to be getting candida back again because you don't want another yeast infection. You don't want any more toenail fungus. You're sick of doing this. You're sick of watery eyes. You're sick of feeling lethargic. And the best thing is you'll have better libido. So just let go. You're going to be a little bit more exciting to be around because you no longer have candida. And so that might be the trick. So I just had to mention that because I've had a lot of clients that have done that, especially because I've been doing this for 20 years, talking about candida. 20 years ago, no one understood candida, especially in the medical world. So I was up against the medical industry teaching about candida to these women and men. And that's one thing that it obviously it's, we all understand it much better now, but yeah. it works. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you see all sorts of things in this field. And there was a, I had a friend who's like one of his, actually, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> okay. Actually, you well, know, leave us all. I'm sorry. I'll right share now. it after the recording ends. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. The number, I still find the number one best thing to do. And I, I just recommended it again yesterday to another client is Candex. I'm sorry. It is a very strong enzyme yeah. and you take it late at night, like you don't eat anything. And then you go to bed and you take it right when you go to bed. And then you take it first thing in the morning because it's a powerful enzyme blend that goes in and chews the outside layer of the candida. And so you don't, and you don't eat for 45 minutes after you take it. So you take that candex at night, take it in the morning and boom, you're, you're going to start feeling the difference. And you, you will, you will probably start with one in the morning, one at night, but you'll get up where you can do two at night two in the morning, two at night, two in the morning, and the candida is going to go away and you're going to feel the difference when you're wiping your bum and you got that, that, you know, mucusy stuff all over it. That's it coming out yes. of the body. Yes. If you're wiping your bottom, if you just look, it's going to come out of the body. You might get itchy skin, make sure your bowels are moving. This is a big thing. I were huge into elimination. And so making sure yes. your bowels are moving is a huge, very important factor. Um, I know there's a few things, you know, so Candex is great. All your antifungals are great. Oil of oregano is great. Black yeah. walnut is great. Oil of oregano yeah. is like can be amazing. Um, mm -hmm. There's another oil of oregano product, ADP, emo yep. which is emulsified oil of oregano. Yep. And you take that. Who's like, that by? That's, uh, um, by no. Um, dynamic. Is that? I think it's dynamic who makes that one. But ADP. ADP, emulsified oil of oregano. Amazing. Yep, that's wonderful. So, so other things that can contribute to getting candida in check. So she already mentioned the enzymes. We mentioned the probiotics. And uh, there are, um, we can chat in a minute about the different options for probiotics. I know some other people mentioned what probiotic do you recommend that doesn't have act lactobacterias in it. So we'll come mm -hmm. back to that. But then the other thing would be um, intermittent fasting can be super helpful because you can just... Uh, limit the amount of time that there's food in your small intestine and colon to feed the candida, you know, just like by limiting that amount of time. So intermittent fasting is another big, super helpful part of that mm -hmm. as well as stress. So we haven't talked about stress. Also heavy metals. Someone mentioned that in the chat, but Absolutely. I want to mention the stress thing really quick. And I'm everyone, please, if you can do me a favor, just come in close for this one. Just take your ear and just like lean in. I was like, get, we're getting real close right now. You guys, I have seen people try to fight candida for literally years and they never addressed their emotional health and they kept dealing with candida over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it never went away until they worked on their emotional health. Okay. Thank you. That was it. So here's the thing with emotions. Two things to understand when it comes to this. First of all, when your body's in fight or flight, guess what is happening? Your body's releasing norepinephrine and all the cap, not all the capillary sphincters, but a lot of the capillary sphincters leading to your small intestines and your liver and your stomach and your colon close. Why? Because your blood is not in 100% circulation to every corner of your body all day long. Depending on whether you're in rest and digest or fight or flight, you know, obviously you're going to have some of those firing all day long, but it's going to direct where blood is flowing throughout the day. So if people are trapped in fight or flight, you have to understand these people are not getting adequate blood flow to their digestive tract and their immune system is being downregulated. And considering the fact that we have way more, you know, microbial cells on and in our bodies than human cells, the immune system plays a huge role in our microbiome balance. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind between the elevated cortisol and the elevated norepinephrine and the lack of blood flow and lack of immune system activity in the gut. This is not an energetic like, oh, like, you know, this is where like the woo woo concept, like this is where the rubber hits the road. I'm saying like whatever you got to do, like whatever practice you got to take 
to from the sound bowl bath to going to deep breathing to breathing to the reiki session to like a hundred different therapies this is where the rubber hits the road where all of these holistic health practices that were like a you know that the medical field were like we don't really know how that works it must be woo woo i'm like have you never heard of acetylcholine and norepinephrine because i'm pretty sure that directs like everything that's going on in your digestive tract and nervous system yeah so just keep that in mind the emotional health is a huge part of getting your microbiome in balanced and uh, like that alone can be the missing piece um in helping people's candida i'm going to mention a couple more things before we stop the recording because these are coming up as questions as well how long will this take right back to amy also how i've seen candida disappear in people in a week or two. Doesn't take long at all. Some people, it's going to take a lot longer. It does matter what you're feeding the candida. What are you using to kill off the candida? Yeah. If you don't have a lot of money, Candex is expensive. You're going to, you're going to do some, we have a lot listed in our human body master guide. You guys, this is what we do for a living. I am a holistic healthcare practitioner. I've worked with thousand people. I love my job, right? Amy, almost her master student from John Hopkins. Yeah. And she's loaded with information, but in our human body master guide. And if you go to humanbodymasterguide.com, yeah. you'll, you'll see a bunch of information, but we have a lot in there. So there's a lot of from, ways from other doctors, from other doctors like, not just yeah, us. 30. So us and yeah, 30 other doctors that is it, that is in our guide um, to do, you know, that you can learn from. And as part of that community, you also get to come to all of our cooking classes. And I happen to have one on Thursday where I'm making all this food that is candida safe, parasite, cancer, no sugar, no grain, and no dairy. And it's phenomenal. But on that note, some things that you, people are looking for suggestions, quinoa. Quin- so here you go. Quinoa, millet, buckwheat, amaranth, and wild rice. Those five things are not grain. They won't feed candida. They're seeds. They're yeah. seeds. And so millet is a seed and quinoa is phenomenal. And we use quinoa all the time in our home instead of rice because we all love it. It's loaded with amino acids and it just is flavorful and tastes great. And so, you know, buckwheat is not a grain. You can be using that, some of the buckwheat noodles. So there's things you can do that that will not feed uh, the candida. Uh, and if, if you've had a hard time, like even wrapping your head around, how could I go grain free? Um, it, you just, it's day by day. And this doesn't mean go gluten-free. Please don't go gluten-free. Most of the gluten-free food you buy is full of starches, which will feed your candida even worse. So just throw that, throw that out there. No time for that right now, but I did want to mention that. Can you list them one more time? Okay. You betcha. So quinoa, my top favorite is quinoa because it's also loaded in amino acids, which builds your proteins. Millet, Millet's really easy because it takes on the flavor of whatever you put with it. So like one of the best mashed potatoes you can make when you're not eating potatoes is millet and cauliflower. Now the trick is millet. So quinoa, two cups of water to one cup quinoa, just like rice and wild rice or anything else. Millet is three cups of water to one cup dried millet. And you guys, this is cheap. This is so inexpensive to eat this way. Oh my gosh. Right. So millet, make up some millet. And then also boil, not boil, but steam some cauliflower and mash the millet with the cauliflower. It is fantastic, quote unquote, mashed potatoes. You'll actually love eating that with, you know, some butter, whatever you're going to put on there, some nut butter and, and some salt and pepper. So quinoa, buckwheat, amaranth. So amaranth also very high in protein. You can get, you can get puffed amaranth as a snack. It's delicious, right? Wild rice and that millet. So that those are the five. So just fantastic things. And wild rice is not um, black rice. It's, it looks dark, but wild rice is a seed. So you do want to get, don't get brown rice or black rice, get wild rice. Mm. Okay. We probably need to wrap this up. We can talk for a few minutes. Yes. I do have to address the one, Mm -hmm. the one comment that was very good, which said um, that, you know, noticing a trend or a correlation in the heavy metal poisoning, the mold, the candida overgrowth and um, parasites. So yes. So we should do a Monday night call on heavy metals specifically. Um, but a couple, Carrie, can you write that down? A couple things that are going on when all of that is happening at the same time is, um, first of all, um, keep in mind that, um, heavy metals and so what's, what's happening is like when there's mold exposure or heavy metal exposure, or some of these environmental toxins, they can come in and actually dis 
place the minerals that are supposed to or the molecules that are supposed to dock onto a receptor site. Mm -hmm. So if you have like a receptor mm -hmm. site that's looking for a specific mineral or looking for a specific hormone, and then you get environmental toxins, the reason why these toxins, sometimes they're toxins because they just create free radical damage and inflammation and like are just like actual like chemicals that are not healthy for your body. But the an even more alarming form of toxin is ones that like kind of bypass your immune system's radar at first and they come in and they dock where that that mineral or that molecule your body actually needs is supposed to go and it displaces it. So now, you know, your your iodine molecule that needs to float up and attach to your thyroid in order to make T3 or T4 to then be converted into T3, you have mercury there. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. iodine molecule can't bind there to make the T4, to make the T3, to give you energy throughout the day. So that can end up causing a cascade of problems um, that affects hormone regulation and immune system regulation. So in there are definitely people who said like their health did not get better till they took um, heavy metal poisoning seriously. Yeah. So that'll be a whole nother call. But um, the the detox master that I'm studying with right now, um, Joshua Mason, he doesn't recommend cleansing from any parasites until you've done a, a heavy metal detox first. And he, he especially recommends you do not do heavy metal detoxing until you've upped your minerals first. So like the first third of his program is hyper mineralization of your body with the good minerals and then heavy metal detoxification and then parasite cleansing and anything else you want to get rid of. So there is just, there's a proper order to this. So we'll bring that up on a future call. I have two things. I feel like we were like a fire hose tonight. Well, we are a fire hose because we only do this for fun. Um, <laughs> if you are interested in learning more about your body and, and being part of some of those classes, drop your email in the chat section. Tammy, can you, or Denise, can you grab those? So grab, just pop your email in the chat section. You can do it private um, or you can just put your email in there to directly to Holistic Health Educators. Um, but we're happy to share more information with you because this is what we do for a living. We want you all to know what we know because because you're going to be out there talking to thousands of pe five people who are going to talk to 10 people who are going to talk to more. So you can get rid of candida. You can get rid of cancer. You can help get rid of your diabetes. You can, you can do this. We've watched it happen. And so, but you can't do it unless you know what's yeah. going on in the body. And if you know how the body functions. So if you want to learn more information from us, we want you there. We want, I want everybody there on Thursday night. We had more people on zoom from my last cooking class than in person. It was so much fun. <laughs> I've never, that was the first time that happened, right? But when we have a hundred people on a Zoom call, uh, it's just super exciting, not just in your chat section, but for us, because we know that our information that we have studied and learned for so many decades is getting out to the masses. Because when you eat, when you, when you try some of the recipes we're going to share on Thursday, you're going to want to show them with your friends. Like everyone who eats our, our, um, our almond bread, like wants it for the rest of their life. Like it's so good. And so we want you to catch and get, can get all that excitement into your family and into your home. So Monday Night Madness happens right here every Monday night. It's with Amy and I. Often my husband will join me as well, Greg. Um, he's the comic relief. Uh, anyhow, and so we are here on Mondays to help answer questions. Not so much answer questions as just share information, but then answering questions comes a lot more in the Human Body Master mm -hmm. Guide. And my final remarks are um, just how much hope, like understanding candida and like what like, obviously you're never allowed to legally diagnose someone, but if you're working with someone who like literally can't figure out what's going on and you're, and they don't know anything about candida, like mm -hmm. this can give them so much hope to like finally realize like what's happening. And, um, mm -hmm. um even if there's further things upstream, it can just help explain a lot of what's going on in the body. So yeah, we hope that you take we some love of these you, and tips we love and tricks. Guts, so we love you life. It's true. It's so and we love your neighbor's guts and yes, your and children's your, even guts your employer's and your gut, boss's and your guts. guts. And we can't reach them. And your dog's guts. We can't reach them, but you can reach them. And your guys. guts. So be a holistic health educator yes. and go share the news. Get this info out there so we can covertly dismantle a candida overgrowth problem. I was going to say. I know. That's why I jumped I'll, in there. Oh, you cut That's me off. That's why I okay. jumped in there. They're dismantling uh, corrupt government systems on live oh calls. Oh my gosh, you said Got it. On a call. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. That's like they haven't heard it before. That's right. They're here. Okay. okay. Goodbye, you guys. This has been wonderful.